independent thing. And that's why you can open a, a web page and you see the text and then you see the like JPEG load line by line scrolling down. And like the, maybe the style sheet doesn't load first. And so you see everything in like yeah. plain Times New Roman for like 10 <laughs> seconds with a white background. And then it like pops in. Yeah, the layout. And it renders the actual layout. Well, all the JavaScript, um, the, the site is very JavaScript heavy. And so what we get is some like loose approximation of the site. And then the script kicks in afterwards and like shuffles. And it starts animating around. and floating around and everything moves. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. And this is, yeah. this is the, the, we should mention this. This is the source of the extremely frustrating, you've all experienced this. I go to web page. I see button I should press. I, on my phone, go to press the, I start moving my hand, but before my finger has touched the screen, some new thing got loaded in and the layout shifted downwards. So like you missed the button because the button moved before you had time to press it. And so you, oh yeah, for the ads and stuff, that's a common, common one. And so you have to be in this paranoid state of, I press the website. I can see the website. I can see the button. I want to press, but I will wait just in case it decides to move <laughs> so that I don't make a mistake. And then, and then you're yeah. actually running like a timeout, a human timeout in your head of like, well, after this <laughs> yeah. amount of time, I decide that nothing could possibly, nothing more is going to arrive. So I press the button. Yeah. Surely nothing will arrive. I'm yeah. even seeing this now in, um, like non web stuff this has become pervasive in like non web stuff where they think this is an okay design like pattern um because apple added on their iPhones um a context menu for photos that like runs an ml algorithm on like image recognition and face recognition and text recognition that then has a delay on it and then pops up an extra context menu item <sighs> so that when you're in the context menu for the photo you try to hit like save and then the context menu will add another item in the bar because it's a delay. Yeah, that, that's horrible. If you do that, you, you up on look, it, that's okay to have something that's lazy loaded, but then you have to reserve the space already and like have some kind exactly. of spinning guy that's like, hey, this is loading. And then don't move anything in the layout when that pops in. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, and uh, they, they, I think the reason they don't do that is probably just because like, there's a possibility that the ML will fail and like not find anything in the image. And so they decided they're like, oh, we'll just only show it up if, if something could, uh, something could be detected. But in that case, it's just like, I would rather you don't show a context menu or you show an empty context menu until yeah. I have the, the completion. Um, I yeah, don't just, want just do a little, a slightly too it's, big it's, box it's, that says we couldn't find anything in this image. Yeah, yeah, or just literally just put nothing. Like it's you just have a gap. Anything would be better than what they have. Um, so yeah, but yeah, you definitely get that on the web as well. You can get, uh, you can get those web apps that like over like hook the right click, so when you try to click on something. You have the like custom rounded corners context menu <laughs> that like has a spinning bar for for a while and like it doesn't work properly and you can't select the text. Yeah, they're like in Discord you start scrolling and like it's not it's not loaded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Like the, yeah, that's really bad. The, yeah. Okay, um so we got ahead of line blocking. Maybe we can accelerate to the encryption scheme because a lot of what I have to suggest, or well, I think we'll be talking a lot about encryption later. So we should understand yeah. the HTTPS encryption system. Yeah. So you send all this, you, uh, you query to request an upgrade. I'm going to remove a lot of this because a lot of this doesn't, um, a lot of the, the upgrade request isn't necessarily required in the case of like a more modern connection. So we'll just presume, presume that we're just in a normal, a more regular scenario, real world scenario. Um, if you're lucky, if you're regularly lucky. Um, 
So the first thing the, the client's going to do after they establish the TCP connection is that they're going to want to establish an encrypted connection. Because again, all that data that was getting sent to HTTP was just packets over the internet and anyone could just look at that and be like, hey, this guy is looking for a certain thing. Um, yeah, and in the beginning that was probably fine because it was, I'm looking for technical documents at CERN or whatever institution. Yeah. So it's like not that important. And, every, yeah. and everything was public access anyway, so you could have just gotten that information yourself. Yeah, exactly. There was a concept of like private data. I mean, there might have been, but I think that was later on. Um, but yeah, you um, notably uh, the domain name is again not part of this. Domain name happens beforehand. So if you have like secrets.com, that's going over the DNS system, which is like not encrypt, usually not encrypted, which means anyone could just look at that. Um, but that's a separate conversation, I guess. Because um, we, we were assuming we already have our IP address. So um, I'm going to try and get this right the first time. The client starts by saying, I want to do, let's assume it's TLS and not SSL. Um, or TLS 1. Well, those are basically 1. the same 1. thing, right? Yeah. 